It's good to be home. And you can see that Brownie is still doing just fine. He's a little bit older and a little bit grayer, just like me, but he's happy to have me home. So now time to get on with the real work and get the garden started. I decided to try to work smarter, not harder this year. So I have some old pallets that I'm putting some cardboard in the bottom and some dirt, and I'm going to try to make container gardens. I have some other container gardens. I have my own mulch and leaves from the country. And so that's one of the benefits of living out here. You have your own leaves you can use. And then I have my onions, my celery, my tomatoes, my potatoes, my spinach, my carrots, my Swiss chard this year, and then I am planting my lettuce seeds that I harvested last year. So I'm excited to see if those come up. When it comes to home gardening, I heard someone say something that was super, super smart. Don't grow as much food as you think you can eat grow as much garden as you think you can manage. And that's where I'm at. I cannot manage a huge garden. And just filling up those pallets with cardboard and mulch and dirt, it's taking me several days to do that with my back issues and I still have one more to fill. Now this isn't something I'm going to have to do every single year. So once I get it done, it will be perfect and I'll be able to continue just using my compost to enrich the soil. I have soil here on my homestead so I don't have to buy any soil at the store. I live at the bottom of a hill. A lot of dirt washes down. I have that really dark, rich soil, which someone reminded me, don't call it dirt, <laughs> call it soil. And the soil is very, very plentiful. It will grow a lot of stuff. It's usually workmanship error, I think, that keeps things from growing. But I have harvested a lot of my own seeds over the winter. I harvested lettuce seeds and I saved some potatoes to plant potato eyes. I saved pepper seeds. I have celery growing out there that I have from kitchen scraps, onions growing that came from me buying a little packet of green onions in the store and getting those rooted. So I have a lot of things like that. And then I bought those Dollar Tree seeds for, for a dollar. I have planted all the stuff that I've shown you so far. And I plan on doing some more planting in the other pallets. This is going to be something that is manageable for me. By putting that cardboard down, hopefully I won't have to weed too much. And I'll just have to water. And I'll throw my compost out there, continue to do that. And I'll be able to pick things and then process them and adjust our diets and adjust our menus based on what is coming out of the garden. If I, by luck, would get enough stuff, then I will can some of it. But as it went last year, just freezing and adding it into what we were normally eating, that's all I had. I'm hoping I'll have a better crop this year. We'll see what happens. I always check the farmer's almanac to see when my last frost date is so that I can plant. Luckily, it landed the last week of April. So by the time I got home, everything I had was ready to be planted. I didn't have to wait to do that so I could start right away. It's in the 70s here. I was used to it being in the 90s, so I've been a little bit chilly since I've returned home. As you can see, there's Yogi. Yogi has fared very well while I was gone. This is the little planter that I got for free 
at that home and garden show in Texas. My husband put it together for me. Isn't that just the cutest thing? So I have it over here on the plant table. Excuse me, Yogi. Can I put that back? I grow things back here all year round. I've shared that with you guys before. I have grown celery all year round, peppers, onions, lettuce, and I don't use a grow light. I have these windows here and they just provide enough sunlight even in the winter. I left a few things here over the winter because as you can see, Yogi likes the plant stand. We keep water up there for her. It's her favorite place to be. My husband was able to keep my green pepper plant alive all winter long inside. It looks a little weird, but it's still going. I also have some flowers that will normally go dormant and they will die during the winter and then come back in the late summer and bloom in like September and October. I tried something new, moved them inside for the winter and my husband was able to keep them alive the whole winter. They did not go through their normal hibernation cycle. I put them outside and they started blooming within three days. So that was really exciting. I'll probably do that again this year at the end of the season now that I know they will continue to grow even during the winter inside. I'm not using any special fertilizer. I'm just using my compost at this stage for everything out there. I do have a little bit of straw and some of the leaves like I showed you that I'm putting on over the top just to keep the moisture in. And then this year I'm going to try to plant more flowers as pollinators. Last year I had problems not having enough pollinators. We didn't have enough bees and you actually need bees to get some of your squash to produce the fruit. They will just not produce fruit and die off if they don't have bees. And my husband said he'd already seen some bees this year, so that's good. And so I'm hoping that we're going to do better with that, but I plan on planting some more flowers and see if I can get them to come up. Last year I had no luck. I planted three packages of flower seeds and not one came up. I'm also going to try to plant some more things from kitchen scraps this year. I'm going to try to plant garlic greens from garlic and also bok choy. Other good pollinators are marigolds and goldenrod and forget-me-nots. So I have some of those to try to plant as well. Even if you live inside in an apartment, that's why I wanted to show you this. It's possible to grow things just next to your window. I've been able to do it even in the winter time. So even if you live in an apartment or a house where you can't get out and dig, if you just get some pots going with some seeds, even my green peppers, it says they need pollinators, but I've been able to grow green peppers right here inside the house on plants. Now they haven't been as big as the ones that are outside, and they haven't been as many per plant. So maybe you can sit them outside for a little bit or keep them outside your door to do a little bit better. But as far as getting a good start going and keeping them going through the winter so I can put the actual plant out in the summer, that works really well as well. Now, I'm not a green thumb type of person. My dad really was, and I try and I continue to try, and every year I try a little bit more, but I have problems sometimes getting things to grow. So don't feel bad, just keep trying. Especially if you harvest your own seeds, you have nothing to lose if you don't do that well because you haven't spent hardly any money. Now I did study water bath canning and I do plan on trying to do some of that this summer. I realized from some of the videos I watched, I don't need any special equipment. And I had thought that I needed some special equipment to do that. But after watching those videos, I can use what I already have to get started. And then if I am successful with that, I can go ahead and purchase some more jars. Now I did start making some of my own extracts and I'm going to share with you in the next video how to do that.
I'm going to start making my own extracts at home. It is super easy and I have all of the ingredients already. You can do this with lemons and limes as well. I'm going to peel off the outside of the Texas oranges that I brought home. I'm using it up with no waste. You want to leave as little bit of the white as possible of the peel showing. Put it in a jar and then fill it up halfway and I have a large jar so I'm not going to be filling it up all the way and then you just want to double the orange amount with cheap vodka. That's all you need to do to make the extract and then cover it in foil, store it in a cool area. You're going to want to shake this every week or so and in six weeks you have extract. You can also do this with coffee beans. You can do this with vanilla beans. Only with vanilla beans you're going to want to store it for about a year. So yeah, look how easy this is making our own extracts. I'm really excited to start doing another homestead thing on my own. Now this also would work if you had a dark jar and you wouldn't have to use the foil, but I don't have a dark jar, so I'm just making do with what I have. I know many of you had asked about brownies, so I wanted to be sure and show him to you in the first clip so you can see that he is thriving and doing well. Now, I always put in my description box things that I use that help save me money. And I also have my two depression era cookbooks in there as well if you would like to help out the channel. I hope that you've enjoyed this little conversation we've had today about gardening. Let me know if you've started planting anything, if you have an area to plant things, or if you're doing an inside garden. I have to do container gardens because I have too many roots in my yard and I've had to move everything clear out next to the road, next to my fence, because I have so much shade that I'm even struggling to have enough sunlight. So let me know what difficulties you're facing and trying to grow some of your own food. I hope to see you in the next video and thanks for watching today.